Hey guys, Brett here. Today's Tech Tip Tuesday, we're gonna talk about water flow in your engine and how to plumb a Coyote cooling system. Okay, so the cooling system on your engine basically makes up of two separate parts. You have a cold side and a hot side. And you need to think about this when you're plumbing your system because a lot of these swap vehicles, you're taking the engine that came out of a factory car and you're putting it into a car that didn't come with. So we're using our Motion Raceworks water adapters and other AN fittings to make them uh, the plumbing easier and visually aesthetic in your race car rather than using the stock radiator hoses because those aren't gonna work because this engine didn't come in this car. But when we plumb this, we need to pay attention to the factory hose routing and the water flow of your engine. Here, as you can see, we're working on a Coyote and we have a factory water pump. Okay, so we use the factory water pump on this system because the Coyote engine has a very good mechanical factory water pump. It's proven to live a high RPM. I still run one on my car. Uh, so we actually switched this back from an electric water pump to a factory water pump. So the cooling system has a cold side and a hot side. The water pump is gonna draw water from the cold side of the radiator after it's been cooled, pump it into the engine. It's then gonna go through the engine and then come back out to the radiator as hot water because it's absorbed the heat from the engine. The radiator then cools the water and then keeps the circulation going. Cold water in, hot water out. The thing to pay attention to is a lot of times we'll be deleting thermostats and changing hoses around. So it looks a lot different than it would from the factory. Because from the factory, we had a thermostat housing on this engine, which wouldn't let the water in until the engine was a certain temperature, which we've deleted that now because we don't need that on this car. Uh, so now the water is just gonna come straight from the radiator into the water pump, flow through the engine, come out of the top of the engine on both sides as hot water and then back into the radiator. The thing to keep in mind is to try to mimic the factory system as much as you can because as soon as you change that flow up, you change the way that the water flows in the engine and the cooling that it does. And the Coyote engine goes into the block, goes around the cylinders, and then goes up to the exhaust side of the head, to the combustion chambers, to the exhaust side, exhaust valves, to the spark plug, to cool the hottest areas first, and then flows back to the center and then comes out. I've seen before in the past where people will go into the back of the head or cap one of these outlets. Now you're forcing all of the water to one side or if you're getting it from the back. So now as the water goes through the engine, it's heated up and then it's exiting. So you'll have hot spots. You'll have this side's gonna be hotter because you capped this off or this side's gonna be cooler because you have two hoses on this side. Uh, and then you're gonna have hot cylinders that are gonna be prone to detonation. So it's important to visualize the coolant flow, uh, learn about your specific engine's coolant flow, how they do it from the factory, how it can be improved. Some factory engines have inherent issues with coolant flow, uh, being that if you add a port or add something somewhere, you're gonna get better coolant flow through the engine and get even temperature on your cylinder so your tune-up stays consistent throughout the engine. So Toro had an electric water pump on it and no expansion tank, and it had a problem where it was getting hot spots in the head and it would crack the exhaust port. Uh, the Coyote is known to a crack an exhaust port if it's been overheated or if it has hot spots in the head. Uh, so it's a pretty common thing if you get the plumbing wrong or if you have an engine that's been running really hot. So we had an electric water pump that was up here where the stock water pump is, uh, was mounted directly to the fitting adapter. And then the radiator in this car is actually lower than the engine. So there, your fill point is here, which is lower than here. And then that gets air pockets built in. You can try to bleed it. You know, we used to fill it through the radiator hose but um, it's just kind of incorrect to get the best system to get the air out of the engine and to keep the air out of the engine from the hot spots. Because if you have a hot spot in your head, you may not know it. Depending on where your coolant temperature sensor is, there's water there and the water's flowing over it and that's a normal temperature. But back here where you have the air pocket is extremely hot and that cylinder's hot, but your sensor's up here so you can't read that. So you don't know exactly until you have a problem and crack a cylinder head that that's happened. So what we did was we added an expansion tank a fill point that basically we're going to fill the cooling system from that tank and that line comes right over here to the top of the water pump where it draws water in from the factory this line is t to the stock expansion tank so that's why we chose that location for this so right here is a suction in this adapter we make goes to an expansion tank to be able to fill the engine with coolant so the radiator cap here is going to be on it's fine so we'll leave that on we'll fill it through there and then it's going to function more like a factory cooling system so water is going to go again into the pump out to the block and then we're gonna feed out of both cylinder heads to the hot tank of the radiator. Okay, so the Coyote water fittings we offer is for mechanical water pump setup or an electric water pump or a remote mounted water pump setup. This would go in where the factory water pump is and then you're gonna draw in here. Uh, thread size 16 ORB on this fitting here to the water pump and to the electric water pump mounter and 16 AN to the main water outlet of the head. 
So we have 16 feed and return to the radiator. Passenger head is a dash 10. If you have a heater core in your car, uh, this line here will run to your heater core, and then it'll come out of the heater core, and then come back up to the radiator uh, to get cooled off. This hose here for the fill is also a dash 10. These can be adapted with ORB fittings at Fluid Works that we make to uh, 10, 8, 12. Uh, we have a lot of different thread adapters, so if you want to plumb your car in a little different size, you can. These are the sizes that we recommend and we have available. Another thing associated with your cooling system that you're going to be doing or monitoring is your coolant pressure. Now, coolant pressure is the pressure inside your cooling system. The reason we want to monitor this is so we can keep an eye on our head gasket and kind of know when we're at the end of our head sealing capabilities uh, and to know if we're blowing a head gasket, right? So you can pick up coolant pressure in a lot of different points. The way I always like to do it is to pick it up from your weakest link, which is your radiator, okay? So I measure it on the hot side of the radiator, the exit from the water of the engine. The reason why I measure it in the radiator because this is the first thing that's going to blow up when it gets too much pressure and cause water to get under the tires and cause you to wreck your car. Now, coolant pressure will be different all over the engine. So where you monitor your coolant pressure from, if you, if you had it on your block and you move it to your radiator, it's gonna be a different reading. And the reason for that is because we have a suction side from the water pump, we have restriction holes in our head gasket. So what the pressure is gonna be in the crankcase is gonna be different than what it is in the cylinder head. The thing to remember with coolant pressure is this is a gauge, okay? This is something that you're gonna to have to know what is normal for your engine combo and where you put your sensor because I've seen multiple times, even the same engine, if they use different size hoses, it's gonna have slightly different pressure in the radiator. So there's not necessarily a good or a bad in here, there's just a constant. So when you make your run, you know you have 15 pounds of coolant pressure throughout the run. Uh, it basically repeats that every time. That's gonna be your normal level. So then you're gonna set your ECU cut to somewhere where you think you're gonna compromise your cooling system below it. 35 pound, 30, 35 PSI is probably a number where depending on your radiator, it's gonna start to compromise uh, itself. It's gonna expand and maybe blow an end tank off, causing the water to get under your tires. So uh, we're gonna measure that from the radiator on this car. Uh, I suggest you do that the same on yours. And again, just keep an eye on it, see where it is. You'll see it start to rise higher in the end of the run. You know, maybe you're getting towards the end of your head gasket life. Um, you need to change the gasket. If you, if you have a detonation event or a cylinder just let go, you're not gonna be able to catch it really quick with your sensor or your ECU cut. Um, you're probably still gonna have a problem then, but it will save a lot of runs. And I've seen it save a lot of cars to have that system in place, turn off the engine when it gets above a certain pressure. Okay, so that was a brief overview on how to plumb your Coyote engine and water flow uh, in your engine. If you have any questions specifically or diagrams needed for your engine, reach out to the sales team. We're glad to help.